Okay, so here we have a velocity versus time graph. The last one we looked at was a distance versus time graph. So uh, things are a little bit different uh, on this one. And now I can't find my book oh, there. My pants. Okay, so we have velocity on the y-axis instead of time. And how does that change things? Well, uh, a lot. Now it, it means a totally different thing. Instead of um, this line, the, the slope of this line in a distance versus time graph would mean the velocity of uh, the object at this point. But now we're talking about the velocity changing over the course of this time. What is changing velocity, you ask yourself? It's acceleration. You're right. So how much has the velocity changed? Let's find the slope of this line. Whatever the slope of this line is, that's going to be the acceleration of that object over the course of that one second interval. And how much does it change? Well, it starts at zero and it gets to 20 meters per second over the course of one second. So that should be 20 meters per second divided by one second gives us 20 meters per second squared, right? So that's the acceleration of this object during that period of time over that first second. Well, what about this flat line right here on top? What does that mean? In a distance versus time graph, that would mean that it's not changing its distance while time is still increasing. So that would mean it's stopped, but not so for a velocity versus time graph. In this case, we ask ourselves, has the velocity changed at all as the time has continued to go up? And the answer is no. So what does that mean? It means it's moving at a constant V. Constant velocity, no acceleration. All right? Okay, how about this? Uh, little downward slope graph here. Well this one, this line would mean in a distance versus time graph, this would mean that the object is returning backward toward the observer. It's getting closer to the observer or wherever its starting point was. But in this case, right here, that's not what it means. Its object is still moving away from us, but it is actually getting slower. Its velocity is decreasing. So this is deceleration occurring right here. And what's the slope of this line? That will tell us the exact value of that deceleration, which should be negative. The uh, acceleration, the velocity has dropped 10 from 20 to 10. So we say it's negative 10 meters per second. That's how much the velocity has changed over the course of one second from three to four. So that's negative 10 meters per second divided by one second gives us negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, that's the slope of that line. That's the acceleration of this object. It's slowing down at that point. How about right here from second four to five? We've got a one second interval and it looks like we jump from 10 all the way up to 40 uh, meters per second. So the increase there is positive and 30 meters per second change in velocity over the course of one second change in time. So what we end up with is 30 meters per second squared as our acceleration. Totally different graph, totally different meanings for the slopes. Uh, than a distance versus time graph. Very important to be able to distinguish between those two. Good luck.